Hi, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs, and today I'm sort of in the mood for making my own stickers, and I'm going to make them for my own art. So I have a pile of different stickers right here. Um, I've had these for a while, around for a while and have not really used them. I have one set here that says square stickers. And then I've got Easy Peel white mailing labels. So those are just the little white labels you put in the middle of an envelope. And then I have laser labels, which are meant for their two and three quarter inches by two and three quarter inch. And these I think are meant for diskettes. Diskettes, there's. This is how long I've had this box. Nobody uses diskettes anymore. So another reason why I should use them up. So I'm going to use, do several different techniques. I'm going to, first of all, produce them from my already made art, uh, my art journal pages, um, my port acrylics and things like that. I often take pictures of or scan into my computer so I can make them into cards. So I'm going to use some of those scanned images and I'm just going to call them up on a blank eight and a half by 11 uh, digital page. And I'm just going to send them to my printer and print them on each of these sticker sheets. Now, I'm not worried about the art um, being the exact size of each of the labels. It's just going to fill the whole sheet. And then my theory is I can just peel them off and stick them down to whatever I want and do a collage effect in an art journal or even use them like a form of washi tape, that kind of thing. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. And in order to show you how I'm going to do that, I'm going to have to switch cameras and uh, do some videoing right uh, with my iPhone when I have things set up. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, so what I've done is I've loaded up Photoshop Elements and I've taken uh, several of my digitalized pieces of artwork, my own creations, and I've created them as eight and a half by 11 sheets. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send these from my computer over here to my printer. And I have loaded up three different types of labels uh, into my printer. And I'm just going to print them out. And where the prints will fall uh, according to the dimensions of the sticker is pretty much random. Okay, so that's one way to make uh, a bunch of uh, labels from your own art using a scan version in your printer. And I'll show you the end result of those after I've gone through some of the other techniques. Well, what about doing some original art brand new? Well, you can do that too. So I thought I'd get out my jelly plate and I got out my eight by 10 and I've got a pile of those labels again, um, different sizes. And I've pulled out some stencils, some mark making tools, some bubble wrap, a little cup, my brayers and my acrylic paints. And I'm just going to basically do some jelly printing right on these labels. So let me get things organized a little bit here. I'm just going to move some of this stuff out of my way so I've got a fairly clear path to work in. And uh, everybody's pretty much familiar with using jelly plates. So all we do is we put a little paint on there. I'm just getting some paper towels ready here because things can get messy. And I'll be right back. That's my phone. And sorry for the interruption. That was the wrong number on my cell phone. My cell phone hardly ever rings because nobody has my number. All right. So as I was saying, I'm getting some paper towels ready because some things are going to get a little messy here. And uh, I'm going to grab a paint. Let's uh, start with... I'm not being too particular today about what colors I'm using. Hmm, good thing, because I think this is pretty much empty. That's garbage now. Uh, let's move in with a little teal. And let's put in a little white just for a little variety here. See what we get. So we're going to brayer this on. And there's lots of videos about how to use jelly plates if this is your first time seeing something like this. And off to the side, I have, I'll just show it to you. 
I have another sheet of labels sitting here. And this is the stuff I'm just using to clean off my brayers on, but that'll be usable as well when it's done. Okay, let's, uh, let's lay down a stencil. Let's lay down a couple of stencils, actually. I'm gonna use that one. These stencils are a little smaller than the surface I've got, so I'll lay that one down. And let's make some marks. Um, maybe we'll make some squigglies. And a few circles. Oh, I should be doing that over on this label sheet here because every little bit adds to it. Okay, and we'll get a sheet of labels. And I'm just laying them, the label side down on top of all of this. And you can use your hands. I like to use a brayer. And sometimes it's good to use your hands though when you're using stencils so you can rub it into the open spaces of the stencil. Okay, let's see what we have. Cool. So I'm going to just set that over to the side. And I'm going to take my and I'll let you see this little wipe off sheet that I'm using here because I'm going to take the stencils off and I'm just going to use them with the paint side down sort of to clean them off and also to get a bit more texture. So you see, you waste nothing. And again, remember, this is my sticker sheet on here. So it's going to give me an additional print. Okay, so I've got this, so I can do a ghost. So I'm going to take a new sticker sheet. And this is one that's a little different shape. Let's lay it down, and I'm just going to rub it, brayer it. Roll it, whatever you want to call this. And we've got another print. So I'm going to put that to the side to dry. And I'm just going to add some paint on top of this. Roll her off that. And this time, let's go for something a little wild. How about this neon green and... Well, let's get real psychedelic here. A little orange. And just a drop of white again. this time, I think I'll make uh, some marks using a catalyst tool. That's these little things. You could use a comb, whatever. Mm -hmm. They have teeth in them, so... And I think I'll take my little cup. Don't need fancy equipment to do this kind of thing. Whatever you got laying around the house will work. Jelly printing is very addictive. Very addictive. Okay, let's grab a new sheet.
totally different look. Okay, now they dry very fast, and I'm going to take a ghost here. So I'm going to go back to my very first one, this one, and I'm just going to pull up more color and texture from what may be left on this plate. There we go. Okay, so... Let's add some more colors on here. Um, let's try some red. And I think this is that's the same shade of red. I think it is. Yeah, that's both the same shade of red. Let's try let's try a little yellow. Yellow there and a little orange down here. Oops, that's more than a little. Let's see if we can get a little bit more of an ombre effect. Let's use another one of these catalyst tools. And uh, let's use this and see what we can. I'm just pressing in from the edge of this little blade tool. And let's see what else can we make marks with. Um, look around see what we've got. How about if I take this this type of brush here and just go sorry if I'm shaking the camera okay I'm just cleaning that off and then Oh, interesting. Don't leave your brush on the sticker paper for too long because it will pick up some of your sheet. Okay, good to know. So let's, uh, let's get another label here. This one we used before. Oops, sliding off here. Cool. And there might be enough on here to put this third sheet down. This also helps to clean off your jelly plate. A little more there. Okay. So I think that's all I'm going to do uh, for now. I'm going to take this though and I'm going to lay it down here. This is my wipe off sheet and I'm just trying to pick up what's left on that jelly plate. So I've got four sheets down here. I'm just setting them off to the side to dry. And so now I could keep going. I could keep making more layers. Um, on this until I get exactly what I want. Um, but that'll do for this demonstration. So I'm going to go and clean this mess up and come back and show you a third method for making your own um, artisan stickers. Okay, so I've got some more labels out here. Again, I've got three sheets of labels that are all different sizes. And I thought I'd try 
making some of these uh, stickers using oxide ink uh, distress pads and a little bit of water because they work with that and maybe some stencils as well. So uh, let's pick some colors here. Uh, how about fired brick red, faded jeans, and no, not that. Fossilized amber, okay. Blue, red, and yellow. And I do have trusty little things for each one. So I need the fossilized amber, and I need the, where's the faded jeans here? Must be on this one. Bear with me, faded jeans, and fired brick. There we go. Now, there's many different ways I can apply these inks to this label sheet. Um, I can do it through stencil. I can just do it as it is here. I can do a dipping technique. So let's try something different with each one. Now, this will involve, because of the nature of oxide inks, I will have to dry between layers. So let's start with the dip method. So I'm going to make a little room here. And I'm just going to take fired brick, lay that down, and let's go in with some of the yellow too. Well, I might as well do the blue as well. Get them all going here. Okay, now I'm just going to spritz these, move my other labels out of the way so they don't get wet. So I'm just going to spritz them, just enough to get the inks to pool. And then I'm going to take this big thing and I'm just going to dip it in. And I've got a lovely mess. And I do mean that. It is a lovely mess. So I'm going to hit it with the uh, with the heat tool. The thing about offside inks is you won't get mud um, when you do this method. But you need to dry between layers. Now, I've got some pooling happening here. So what I'm going to do is give it a little bit more of a dry. Paper's curling a little bit. It'll flatten itself out as you can see. And I'm just going to take a paper towel and I'm just going to blot. Now you can do the same thing with distressed inks. They don't have to be the oxide. You can do this with basically any water-soluble ink. Or, sorry, uh, any water-soluble stamp ink. Um, because obviously I'm working here with water. Okay, so I've got that layer dried, and I think I'm just going to give my tabletop a little bit of a spritz. And now this time I'm kind of looking at where I want to put the color. Some spots that didn't get any last time, and I want to make sure I get a fairly good coverage. Okay, that's good. All right, we'll dry this. Now this just by itself makes a really cool background and would make really cool labels. But just as I do with the jelly plates, I'm going to add more layers on top of this just to give it a little bit more texture. So once I have it fairly dry, again, you can either sit and wait for it to dry or you can blot a little bit. That'll make things go a little faster. Now, since I'm going to use these as a background, 
in this way. Now I do notice that my stickers are lifting a little bit off the sheet on this. So I think I'm going to set this one aside and let it air dry the rest of the way. I'm going to get a, another sticker sheet here. But in the meantime, I'm going to wipe up the leftover inks off my work area. And this time I'm going to use my stencils. And these were the stencils I was using last time. I didn't bother to pull out any new ones. But I also, a trick to make your stencils stay in place, get yourself some repositionable spray. It doesn't matter what kind. I happen to use stick and spray. They don't make this one anymore by Crafter's Companion. And just take the back of your stencil, give it a light spray. And this will keep your inks from running underneath. I'm going to use a couple of stencils with this. But you could just use one. It's up to you. Okay. You know, I'm going to stuck down to that deli paper there, but that's okay. Actually, if you're wondering why I have this sheet of deli paper sitting here, it's just because of my overhead lights. It, uh, You'll see them glaring if I don't because of the craft mat underneath. So that just stops that because that can get quite annoying. Okay, I'm going to take my inks and um, I think I should use different colors. Maybe I'll use some broken china. I'll stick with the fossilized amber. And maybe the spiced marmalade. So I need a broken china and a spiced marmalade. There's the spiced marmalade. And broken china is here somewhere. There's broken china and my fossilized. So let's start with the yellow. And I'm just going randomly. Just move this up a little bit more so you can see. And I'm not overthinking this. I'm just putting some color down wherever. You can use as many colors as you want. But I have found from my own experience that although with the oxide inks it doesn't matter as much, but I find five is really the limit. Okay. And I'm letting the colors overlap as well. I'm not particularly too worried about that. But you can see how the repositionable spray really keeps my stencils in place. Okay, I think I've got my coverage on here. So let's take off the stencils. Now, that looks pretty good, but I do have sort of where the stencil frames were. So what I can do is I can just take one of these stencils and just fill in the blank parts. Grab one of these other stencils 
and it doesn't matter if our patterns overlap because you won't be using these in a full sheet so no one's going to see it you're going to be breaking up the pattern um, when you apply them to your pages okay that looks pretty good now if I want to add just a little bit more of a dimension to this let's move the stencils out of the way and we're just going to spritz a little water because oxide inks react to water and I'm just going to let this sit for a minute And what I want is a little bit of water marking on here. Now, it may be because I put these on fairly lightly, or it could be the paper itself that I'm using, the label paper. But I'm not really getting very severe watermarks, but I'm getting some. And that's fine. Now one thing you have to keep in mind, with the exception of the jelly prints that we have done, the inkjet printer ones and these with the oxide inks will reactivate when water is put on them or a wet medium. So what you can do is spray a clear workable fixative on the sheets once they're all dry. If you're worried about um, putting wet media on, medium on top of these and they'll so they won't run. So the workable fixative um, will dry clear in about five minutes and you don't have to worry then about your colors running. So I'm going to put this aside. I have another sheet here and I want to really get that oxide look. So I'm going to pick some other colors. Let's just get the caps on these ones. Get them out of our way. If I can find the caps, if there it is. And let's pick something else out of the set. So what about peeled paint? Um, cracked pistachio. And what might go good with that? I was thinking of the walnut stain, but I don't know if I want to go that dark. Ah, let's go radical. And let's use the wilted violet. Okay, so let's get applicators out for all of these. Wilted violet, peeled paint, and cracked pistachio. And where's my cracked pistachio? It's right there. All right, got them all. Okay, now this time, different sheet of labels. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in random coverage of the colors that I have picked. And I'm not really too concerned where they're going. Get my colors to overlap a little bit. And my fingers are a little dirty with this too, but it's, that's okay. That adds a little bit more texture to our sheet. And you see how these oxide inks are transparent enough that they let other colors come through from the other layers. They don't turn to mud. This is something you can't do well with the, dis with the ordinary distress inks. They will turn to mud depending on your color combination. So that's one of the unique properties of this hybrid type of ink because it's really a mixture of pigment and dye ink but yet it still will react to water 
Okay. And that's what I'm counting on, is it reacting to water. So I'm going to do the good spritz. And I'm going to do it fairly heavy so it'll run. Still got a little of that repositionable spray. So I'm trying, I purposely want this, these colors to run. Okay, I'm going to dry it a little bit. And I think I'll do a little bit of a blot. And that's also the beauty of these inks. If you've got too much ink in one area, just blot it up. Because you can remove some of the ink this way as well. They are my new favorite coloring tool. So I want to get this fairly dried because I'm going to do a little bit of rubber stamping on this layer. And for that, I'm going to use, I could use the oxide inks for the rubber stamping if I wish, but I think I'm going to use, um, I'm just going to use black stays on. Or maybe I'll use a colored stays on. Yeah, maybe I'll use a colored stays on for this. But I just want to make sure this is thoroughly dry. Now, the one thing I've just thought of as I dry this is, since we're using a lot of moisture on this group of uh, stickers, it is possible that the adhesive backing may not stick as well because of the water. If that's the case, then you could just lay them down um, with a glue stick, collage stick, or with your uh, gel matte medium, or whatever, even just plain white glue, uh, depending on what you're doing with them. If that's the case, I don't know yet because I haven't tried. I just flipped it over to get it to flatten out a little bit more. Okay, I think. Still feeling a little damp to me. But what I'm going to do is, so you don't have to watch this any further, is I'm just going to stop the video at this point, make sure this is thoroughly dry, and then I'll come back and I'll show you what I'm going to do to enhance this background. And now to add just a little bit more texture and dimension to this background, uh, label sheet. I just grabbed a script stamp. It could be any rubber stamp you like. Uh, for backgrounds, my go to is often script. And I'm using Archival Black Ink by Ranger because this is permanent ink and it's waterproof. And as I said, you could do this with any kind of ink that you want, but I like using the waterproof inks since I know that. I'll probably be putting things on top of this. And if you don't get a perfect impression, it doesn't matter. Because it's all going to be torn into little pieces anyways. Now, if I wanted, I could keep going. I could put uh, other, I could use other rubber stamps on this. But for my purposes right now, I think I'm just going to leave it at that. So I'm going to hit this with the heat gun. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how you can build a background page using your new art stickers. Okay, now I have a whole bunch of um, art stickers that are based on my own art. And just to review what I did, the first set were simply a digital image. Uh, they were a picture, a scan of some of my previous backgrounds. And I just simply put them through uh, my printer right onto the labels, not 
caring where they end up on the labels, just a full sheet. Next set, I used my jelly plate and I used some stencils and some mark making tools and I just treated these like I would any kind of jelly print um, that I would do. And I even used the cast off sheet, the sheet that I was getting rid of, of my ink off my brayer and that, because that's a useful piece as well. And then last but not least, I used my Distress Oxide inks and some stencils in some cases and a rubber stamp to create these. Now, the ones that I used wet mediums on, the paper did warp as it dried. So just to get them flat again, I do a little thing. I, I do this little trick all the time. Um, you could take a dry iron and between two sheets of parchment paper, um, press them. Don't use steam. Use a dry iron at the highest setting and that will flatten them out too. But I like a little faster way. I have a heat laminator. I just put them into my carrier folder and put them at the highest setting and run them through the uh, laminator. Now, the one thing though I'm not sure of, and we're soon going to find out is how the combination of moisture on these sets of stickers and heat affects the adhesive uh, potential of the sticker. Now, as I said, not a big problem. If, if it doesn't have the stickiness to I, that I want, I'll just get out my gel matte medium and glue it down, or you could use a glue stick. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a small little background page. And I have a little book right here where I keep all my background techniques as a reference. So I'm just going to find a blank page on here, in here. And we'll try it. So let's first of all try these stickers. Now the one thing you may have trouble finding is where to peel the sticker off because it kind of covered up the lines. But I think if you look at the back, hold it up to a bright light. Yeah, you should be able to see. There we go. Now these were those big diskette ones. And I am just going to put it right up here in the corner of my page. And I'm going to grab another one. Oops. Ooh, bonus. You get uh, the frame around them too. You could you could use that as well. Okay, now let's go over to this one. And at this point, I'm not really concerned about my colors matching. And overlapping your stickers is probably a good idea. And you see, you get a real wide selection of colors when you do this. And let's take a few from this one. See how fast you can build your page? And so those are jelly. We'll take one off of this one here too. If I can find it. Now, you don't have to use them just like this. You can tear them as well. And this was my cast off sheet. So let's see what we get from here. Still in the jelly prints. Let's give that one a tear. Okay, and then these were my oxides. So this sheet, seems I'm pulling all the ones with the big squares, but that's okay.
you know, I got to use one of these because these are really cool. I could have tore all the way around the edges of that as well. But there you go. Now, the water and the heat did not seem to affect the ability of these to stick down. But if any of these edges were coming up, I could just touch it up with a little bit of white glue. And I think I need something down in there too. So, okay, you see, I've got this little leftover hanging part, but that's still sticky. So I can just rip that off. And stick it there and I think I'm going to use another piece of that edge so you see you don't really waste anything on these it makes a good border strip there you go pretty cool eh so that's a great background technique now I'm sure you can think of other ways to make these as well. I just used digital prints, oxide inks, and the jelly print, but I'm sure you could do this with markers, with um, just doodle all over the sheet and use the pages up that way. You could do it with spray inks, spray them on, let them intermingle, let them marbleize. Um, really, you can do this with anything. You could even use glitter on these and make them sparkly as well. So really, why go out and buy stickers? You can make your own. Easy as that. Okay? So I hope uh, you learned something from this video. I know I did. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye for now.